What's up, team? B2 checking in with a little conflict of nations. I'm going to talk about why India is the best country to start with. Please fight me. Change my mind. And also, I ranked up to rank 54. What up? Okay, here we go. The top 10 reasons in no particular order why India is the best starting country. So first off, it has eight starting cities. Really good, and that's going to be important for later, right? So if we kind of take a look, you end up with New Delhi, um, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Jaipur, Mumbai, Patna, and then you have uh, one more, Kolkata. Now, so, it, and they're pretty compact, but we're going to get into that a little bit later in the video. So let's just say that when you first start off, there's countries that have 9 and 10, um, but they're bigger countries, and I'm going to go into that in detail in number seven so you'll want to stay tuned on here also if you haven't subbed hook your boy up give me a sub put on the notification show me some love all right so number two india has one of the smaller land masses now that's going to be a little it's going to tie in a little bit more with um with number eight on the list as well but i wanted to point that out that it's just kind of a smaller landmass. you get china you get this whole section you get forget russia i don't even have to point that out how gigantic this is from tip to tip over here <laughs> he said tip uh anyway there's some bigger countries that that do come into germany and whatever but obviously they're landlocked and they're harder to get to um i believe us has a good one but they're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere look at that land mass now you only have to fight canada and mexico that's like fight, fighting my two nieces right so uh no big deal there uh but india does have a pretty good buffer and i'm going to go into that a little bit in detail as well but i wanted to point out the smaller land mass because it's incredibly important to have a tight group there um, third is that you're bordered by three computer areas. You got Sri Lanka, you have Bangladesh, you have Nepal and Kashmir. Actually, there's four computer players. Like I, you could take four cities and end up with 12 cities really quick. Um, and then the only person you have to really make peace with is Pakistan. Um, and China touches a little bit of the tip. <laughs> he said tip again. Unbelievable. Um, so, so you do have that. You can actually get out quick to um, uh, to Colombo down here. Um, you can get over to Dhaka, Kathmandu, and was it Jammu? I think Jammu. What city is it? Yeah, Kashmir. So um, you can grab four quick cities to twelve. That's always a plus, right? Um, and then when you get ready to fight Pakistan, you're fighting twelve cities to five. So unless Pakistan makes it across and starts harassing New Delhi and Jaipur, there's there's just I mean let's be honest, it's GG Pakistan. So just it's GG. You, you're done. And at 12 cities to five, you are starting to produce some good resources. Um, you've just got a huge advantage on the map. Um, and then usually by day four and five, you've already hit that area. If you take the five from Pakistan, you go from 12 cities to 17 and it just spirals from there. Like you, you, it's off to the races. So depending on who you hook up in your coalition, uh, you've just got a great start. So, um, no, that's number five, basically. Um, number four was on day two. You can end up with the 12 cities, and those are the ones I pointed out. So number six, and this is just a geography quick one, right? So if you look at the bottom part of this map, um, you cannot access any of this bottom part here all the way across to here without coming through Mumbai or Kolkata unless you have a naval unit landing in here of some sorts. You just can't land, there's no seaports. Look, Colombo is not connected, so you can't get to Bangalore or Hyderabad. They're really two good, good, safe cities early on. You just have to protect your port, which you do. You just throw a little stack out there, and, and of course they can't get in there unless they come down the coast or whatever. But I usually just kind of move this guy a little bit towards right there. And it protects both of these cities of Ahmedabad and uh, Mumbai, right? And of course, I've got my dude in here, my elite, the teamers uh, name. And I'm raising these ships because I'm actually going to film a naval video too. So if you look, quick side note, and you check out this, I've got them pretty much leveled up. I've got a little bit to finish. I got two ships finishing completely. And then I'm going to do the freighter and the, and, and the Corvette. Uh, and I may throw an aircraft carrier in there. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I get crazy. Um, the way the map stands now for this particular game, whoops, eh, on the diplomacy is that we're in a far, far advantage here. Like we have a huge advantage over Algeria, Australia. So we've been kind of insulated over here. I ran through all the Asia places and, 
and kind of, um, I gotta click off this because in my head, so it's like ping, ping. So I'm gonna finish off Japan here, um, and then I'm gonna start the march through Russia. He has no more cities. I've, I've taken the cities, I believe, and I can check that just by simply typing in his name. And see, he has zero cities, 27 VPs. So I'll take those 27 VPs. It's manpower and it's, and it's cash. Uh, and it's uh, more for the win, right? Because I've worked myself up from down <laughs> down here at like ninth or 10th all the way to 2nd now. So your boy's been putting in some work on the India game. Loving this round. Uh, got into a good coalition. I actually got into a good coalition late game. Uh, Axum, let me take a look at that. Okay, got Oh, yeah, I flew over there and knocked out a guy right here. That's what happened. I, uh, I saw that opportunity. Now I can't get my, my men's my men's over there unless I go through Kenya or Egypt. So, uh, And I think Egypt is up here fighting uh, Sweden. Yeah. I mean, you could tell that this war is already kicking off between uh, the two giant alliances up here on the Egypt corner. So I'm probably going to jump in. But look at these stacks. We've just... It's been like 10 days with no activity. So back to the video. Uh, number seven, the actual geography of India is smaller. It's easier to react to get troops back and forth. And and you're right next to, um, that's going to number eight. But anyway, the, the cities are pretty tight. You can get two units together here, take out Dhaka, then come back and get Kathmandu with the same four units. It's fighting four on two. You just don't take the losses. Um, and then you can go um, um, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Bangalore down to Colombo and then shoot them right back over to Mumbai and group them, right? So there's a lot that you can do early game to get in there, but the smaller landmass uh, enables that. It's like Australia. I mean, it's a big landmass, but you just don't have anybody down here. To, what is this guy? What's the Swedish submarine, dude? He's just like chilling in the middle of the ocean, man. I like it. But uh, you could tell, like, uh, uh, as we're coming down here, oh, he's getting ready for Australia. Um, I'm actually playing an Australia game, which has been pretty fun. Of course, you take New Zealand, you hop the islands. Um, but on here, like, no one's going to really come in. I, I mean, Alice Springs is protected. It's going to take you a whole day to go there. So you you really, it's a pro and con, right? So in Australia, you got to defend all these countries on the outer rim because anybody could land at any of those cities at any time and, and wipe you out. And if they're smart, they're going to come over, smash Sydney. Um, and then uh, Alice Springs has your rare materials. So, I mean, there's really no, there's really no going. But in India, the landmass is just, it's, it's smaller, it's tighter, it's compact. So that leads to number eight, right? Um, the capital's not exposed. Like New Delhi's not, it, for being on the northern section, it's going to take you a half day for any of these guys to get over here. And you're going to have Kathmandu as a buffer. And Pakistan is only a five country nation. And they have, um, I'm going to talk about that number nine, why Pakistan's not really a threat. But uh, so so you, you can get troops from Jaipur over here to New Delhi really quick. And therefore, you don't have to sweat your capital just getting bombarded, right? Uh, it's just not going to happen early as India. Uh, number nine, your closest player countries have too many en enemies to come after you. Like you really have to poke a bear with a stick to get them to run after you. Um, if you look at Pakistan, they've got to fight. So this is Pakistan right here. It's under my rule right now. But Karachi is um, is Pakistan one, Hyderabad's two, Kudzar three, Kandahar is Afghanistan, right? So Multan that's four, and um, Jalalabad is Afghanistan. Also, um, Islamabad that's five, and Peshawar that's six. So so they have six. I'm sorry, six starting cities. Still a big disadvantage over the eight, and they can't get to anything unless they take Jammu quick. But Pakistan has to fight China who borders them up top here. They have to fight Af Afghanistan, which is in this middle section. And then they have to fight Iran at the bottom section. So if you're Iran, you're coming this way quick to take some territory. Afghanistan is gonna take the nearest neighbor. And then of course, China, if they want it to come down. If you're China, I mean, forget about it, right? Like China, China does have a threat from India. Um, they could if they wanted to go through Kathmandu to Lhasa. And I guess China could come the opposite direction. But the early warning is this is this Nepal territory here, which um, which would give you, you'd see the territories changing hands. You would know they're marching towards you, right? But, but, but China has to deal with Mongolia. They have to deal with Russia here. Um, they have to deal with Japan coming across because it's just after they knock off North and South Korea, whoever takes those, then they're already bordered up. Um, you got Vietnam, Myanmar, 
um, Thailand, Indonesia, and Philippines, right? So they're all close here. Indonesia could just start marching up through here, which means you know China is just a skip away once these countries are falling. But any of these three countries can now go after China as well. So it, it makes this whole Pacific Asian um, basin here just incredibly difficult to manage. India, Indonesia, Philippines, very tough. Um, Australia, it's just it's just a nasty place to fight, man. Like I always see Philippines getting hit from like crazy angles too. Like I'll I'll see like ships from Thailand coming in there or like Japan coming down. Uh, not a big fan of starting as the Philippines. Um, and so for for the last one for number ten, um, you're gonna look and this is probably one of the more important ones. Um, you have two access points for naval units really to be built. You have Mumbai and you have Kolkata, right? Ahmedabad, you uh, you kind of you do have it here, but they're not they're, they they don't have a port, so nothing's gonna go in there and land unless it's a, a, um, this infantry right here. Whoops, uh, let's go to the research. You would have to have this infantry here, the naval infantry. When you hit that, you can see like they can, they're amphibious. They can embark and disembark without the use of harbors. Very handy if you're going to do that. And they have a huge advantage. Um, let me show you this. Uh, they attack at a six, but they're terrible defenders, right? So, uh, so if you leave them in a city, they're pretty much going to get handled as the, you don't want them as defense, right? So that's very important because now you can stack um, ships here. Um, and some AA so that, that if a bomber comes in, they're going to get scanned on radar and AA'd out by your ships, um, as well as whatever AA you have in there. So you could actually stack like um, a Thad over here in Dumka and, and it not be in range of anything else to get to, right? So you, a, a plane's going to be coming from this side or this side, not over here, um, as well as some of your areas over here. You could put a Thad between the two, um, a Thad with some AA, maybe some rocket um you know, some, some rocket launched guys in there. There's a lot of ways to defend this, but the two naval cities definitely help out tremendously. And because these cities are close together, I always airport these two cities. Um, and then usually Hyderabad, right? So um, they'll have a, a range around here. So any impending troops coming in, you can hit them with some choppers or something that's low flying. It's, it's really cool. So I, I love India for these reasons. I know that I've probably missed some pretty good ones too. I would love to hear your guys' input in the comments to see like what, like what else, or if you think another country has a better starting advantage, I would love to hear that as well. Hope you guys are doing well. Any questions, hit me in the comments. Holla.